Hi guys, thanks for tuning in and watching this video. Uh, today I thought I'd do a review on one of my first Rolexes that I purchased um, many years ago and uh, thought it necessary to do it because it is a gorgeous watch. And that is the uh, Rolex Yachtmaster 40mm in sunburst blue. So really, really lucky to have this. Um, it will put it next to its big brother, the uh, Sea Dweller 43, just so you can kind of get a comparison really for how big the SD is uh, compared to an elegant or the more elegant uh, Yachtmaster. Completely different in terms of spectrums, both tall professional Rolexes, but as you can see, um, you know, something like the SD43, you've got a lot more kind of squarer uh, edges um, or sharper edges, I always say. I mean, it's just a, such a mega watch. This is, it really is stunning. Um, but I thought I'd put it next to it just so you could compare. Uh, on the wrist today, we have a Rolex Milgauss. And as we all know, this is, I've reviewed it. It's one of my favorites, the Z Blue. Uh, one thing I do like about my Rolex collection or just generally in collection, I've always tried to get different types of dials, but I do particularly like the blue ones um, with this and the Yachtmaster. And we also have a Datejust 2 in a blue dial. So very fortunate to have a little bit of a mixture. Um, so we'll take the, the Milgauss off and we'll, we'll talk about the Yachtmaster. So, I bought this about five years ago, um, very lucky. I uh, It was my second Rolex, I did have one before, which I stupidly sold, and I, oh God, I won't even get bore you to death, but I had a, a Daytona white face, uh, stainless steel. Now sold, probably, not, I'm sure I'll be able to buy it back at some point, but uh, for now, it's gone. Um, so this was my second Rolex, uh, and uh, kind of uh, just thought I fell in love with it when I saw the dial. And that's sweeping second hand lollipop red. I just was like, oh, this is stunning, stunning watch. Uh, and basically, you don't see many of these in the wild. I think it's because everyone buys a Submariner. Um, and I've actually done a video on uh, a Sub versus one of these and the difference between the two. Um, but I think because everyone buys a Sub because they're, oh, they are cheaper if you can buy one new. If you buy one on the grey market, they're probably the same price as one of these. They really are. I'll give it a bit of a polish. Um, they all fetch that kind of same similar money um, and I really don't know why because I think I'm going to make a prediction this is going to be one of those kind of cult watches in years to come uh, we'll all regret that we didn't buy a Yacht Master when they were like retail or when they were in the shop window I mean I think it's harder now I think these aren't even in the shop window anymore um, you might get a Yacht Master 2 but even the 40 mil Yacht Masters are just difficult whether it's the rhodium dial or the blue the sunburst blue dial but Couple of lovely points about this watch. Um, obviously, uh, it's got a quite a similar bracelet to what the Daytona is. So the polished center and brushed uh, outer links. It's a really, really gorgeous watch. Very similar case kind of dynamic. So in terms of it's got like a, unlike the GMTs and subs and SDs of this world, this has got quite a nice rounded, elegant uh, kind of, uh, uh, body to it um, so really really nice and that's one of the reasons why it sits so well when you wear the watch it sits so well on the wrist it's very comfortable dare I say it, it's probably the most comfortable uh, Rolex that you can wear um, because of the how it sits on the wrist probably with the the chronograph the um, the Cosmograph Daytona um, you know you, you probably this they're quite similar characters um, but really really stunning uh, some advice for you if you ever buy one of these just be careful because don't ever go out drinking with it like I did because you don't you know when you drink and you're like oh did I scratch my watch gutted and you wake up in the morning and thinking oh my god oh no I didn't or sometimes you wake up and you're like oh my god absolute horror story on this side here where the where the platinum um, uh, dial uh, not the dial platinum uh, bezel is um, it's multi-directional but what you have to be careful with people is if you scratch that uh, the polished is fine but it's the actual kind of sandblasted area that's in between the numerals and the graduations just be careful because um, if you scratch it it basically looks underneath it's, it's like a polished format so I scratched it just there and unfortunately it then looked really out of place I then sent it down to a jeweler in London a guy called uh, Russell Tolleman he's a really good jeweler um, takes his time but uh, you'd rather it be done right um, and he kind of sandblasted the entire bezel and uh, fixed it and then gave it a very light polish. So this is probably, uh, because it was one of my first ones, this is probably the one that I wore the most 
for a number of years until obviously the collection got bigger and naturally you wear less of them, but they still will get wrist time. Um, but yeah, just be aware. Uh, that's probably why the sub again is quite popular because it has the Keracrome, Ceracrome uh, bezel, the ceramic bezel. Um, it's obviously brushed metal as opposed to polished links. Um, and uh, it's obviously a little bit more usable. So I would always say this is more of a dressier watch than your sub. Um, and I know everyone loves wearing subs, whether you're wearing shirt and trousers or suit or whatever, but this is certainly more of a dressy occasion, but whatever you do, don't drink with it. Cause you like, you end up waking up in the morning going, oh my God, did I scratch it? No, I didn't, but sometimes I did wake up that one time and it, it wasn't cheap to actually do the repair. It was about 300 pounds. It's quite time in, time labour intensive. So, so yeah. But apart from that, it's got the uh, the kind of old movement. They've actually released this watch now with a new movement. I think it's the three two three five movement. So this is the forty eight hour power reserve as opposed to the seventy hour power reserve. But to be honest with you, who cares? This is a gorgeous watch, um, and literally doesn't matter about the power movement to me. I really don't care. Um, and I, I, I paid quite reasonable money for it. I suppose back way back when. Um, so I think they're good value for money. Like I say, uh, the subs will always kind of uh, outsell these, but I do think that these are a great value for money for what they are. And get one quick because when like, I think this will very much follow the Explorer 2 route. By the time you can't buy a, a Submariner or you can't buy a GMT, the Yachtmaster may be a, another step for people who want to enter the stainless steel sports world of Rolex, but can't get a sub or can't get a, a, a GMT and these are these are probably what dealers may say well I can get you one of these in six months as opposed to f six years so uh, so yeah but um, the stunning watch 40 mil sits beautifully on the wrist that red lollipop hand there is with the red writing it's just gorgeous really really nice some people have changed the numeric date for a red one but I like it in black um, and this is another watch very similar to the Milgauss really that when you get it in certain lights, uh, the blue is just stunning. So we're in a room at the moment, it's hard to tell, but you get this out in the sunlight, it is absolutely unbelievable. So rather than give you all the tech specs, I really aren't, I'm not a techie kind of person. I'll just tell you the day-to-day -day of wearing a watch and how I get on with it and what to watch out for if you, so you don't scratch it. But gorgeous thing, very happy with it. And uh, if this is not going anywhere, this is staying in the collection um for a long time um i'll never sell another rolex because i always regret selling the one that i shouldn't have done so from now on i'm not selling any um so there you have it but uh yeah really beautiful really if you want a watch that's going to sit on the wrist and you know these are three or four thousand pound more than a sub um so uh on the as, as a new watch on the gray market like i say they're probably around about the same price these are then a bargain if you can buy one of these for nine ten Ten and a half thousand pounds. I think that is really good investment. Um, if you're going to have it for 10, 15 years, you can't go wrong. Really, really classic watch. Came out in 1992. It's not going anywhere. This is a watch that I don't think they'll discontinue ever. And if they do, you know what will happen to the prices. Like everything else, it just gets absolutely stupid. But yeah, really, really pretty, gorgeous, uh, beautiful Rolex. Very proud to have it in my collection. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, keep watching, keep tuning in. Uh, there will hopefully be some more reviews shortly. Um, but thank you very much for watching and see you soon.